Yay! It's a fry yay, peeps. I'm hoping you've had a fantastic week. We're just winding up the weekend. I've only just realized that it's going to be a long weekend here in Melbourne. So if you're going to be enjoying the long weekend, good on you. Right, so you're watching a replay of a segment that I've just shot on uh, Facebook Live that um, is basically going to be an hour long and we're going to be talking about how you can actually, um, you know, um, respond to your marketing, how you can actually be, do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So this is going to be a question and answer segment. While other people are going to be joining us live, I already have pre, um, pre, pre determined questions that I've been getting from um, either my audience or people, um, you know, that have been watching my stuff and have questions regarding how they can actually, um, you know, start a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So my name is Prosper Tarovinga. If this is the first time that you're tuning in, um, I want you to know that I viscerally believe that. If you're going to be running an online business, it has to be profitable and you got to uh, really, really enjoy what you're doing. And I see Matt Smith has just tuned in. What's going on, brother? This is a question and answer show. Um, you know, it's something that I do every Friday so that people can, um, you know, ask me questions regarding how they can be, do and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. So if you've got any questions, have them ready or just type them in. And um, yes, let me know what you might want to know regarding my business, regarding your business or regarding how to have a business that's um, profitable and enjoyable. And like I said, I'll be sitting here for an hour. I already have some questions that people have sent through to me that um, I've um, already written down. So we will be um, having a look at those, um, you know, as we go by. So just type in where you're tuning in from. Um, this one is a, more of an interactive show. I really need to see the people that are on. I really need to see, um, you know, what sort of, you know, um, audience are we uh, talking to. While I sip um, a, a sip of what has now turned into a chewy, um, it was a smoothie that my wife <laughs> made for me a little bit earlier on, but I was getting busy. Now it's all set. Now it's it looks like I've got to have to chew through to get the goodness in this. So, mm. no, it's still good. It's still good. So let me know where you are in business. Let me know what it is that you might have questions, um, you know, around it could be your marketing, it could be your personal branding, it could be, you know, the new Facebook algorithm, it could be about building an audience, it could be about engaging that audience, it could be about video, um, you know, all of those things that actually, you know, help you have a business that's uh, profitable and enjoyable. The reason why I do this is um, I spend almost half of my days um, you know, dealing with small business people like yourself, um, you know, that are starting off or that already have a business and we're really helping them, you know, crafting their content, converting their clients, um, you know, capturing the right leads and also connecting with their audience. Um, you know, all of those things, that's what we do. And I see Antman has just tuned in. How's it going, brother? Um, you know, thank you so much for participating yesterday. I'm hoping that you also get value in the show today if you ask a question. So let me know what you might have, um, you know, um, you know, troubling you or you might just need answers for because whatever you're going to ask, somebody else might also be thinking about it. All right. So. You know, I really, really want to inspire you to do things that actually inspire you as a person. And I want you to know that most of the work that I do is to help, um, you know, entrepreneurs like yourself to generate leads, to generate revenue. And basically, we're working around the clock around PR and branding, uh, PR for myself, branding for myself, branding for my clients, getting them, um, you know, in the mainstream media, all of those things. If you've got any questions, um, you know, regarding how, um, you know, I can also help you be, do and have, um, you know, things um, that would help you, um, your, your business propel, I'm more than happy to do that because all you can do is all you can do. And if you get advice uh, from other people, it would actually help so that your business becomes, um, you know, profitable. So like I was saying, if you're watching this on YouTube, this video is being recorded on live on Facebook and people are going to be asking questions. So if you've got any questions, let me know. Um, or if you want me to start... 
um, you know, I've got four or five different questions that have already been, um, you know, put across by other people. So maybe we can start off with those while you warm up or while you're typing in your questions. I see Din Sprague has just tuned in. How are you doing, brother? Hope you've had a fantastic week. Um, this is the Ask and Prosper show. If you've got any questions regarding how to make your business profitable and enjoyable, let me know. All right. Um, I've got a few questions that already have been sent through, so maybe we can start off with those. Now, this one comes from Kim. And if, Kim, you're going to be tuning in later on, um, just give us a thumbs up or type in the number one so that I know you watched this and that, um, you know, I've actually put your stuff on there. Now, Matt says adult content social media strategy building an audience for a um, sex toy online on social etc challenging lots of restrictions absolutely um when it comes to things like that a lot of people um would rather talk about money robberies they wouldn't want to talk about sex so yeah it's it's all about knowing who your audience is it's no it's all about knowing what your audience really really needs who are they paying attention to in the marketplace already, Matt, that is already, um, you know, discussing those topics? Maybe you don't want to lead with, um, you know, talking just about the sex toy itself. You could talk about tantric um, sexuality. You could talk about how people can actually use, um, you know, their own sexuality in order to be, do and have or enhance themselves. So if you lead in with that product, maybe that's why you're facing um, you know, rejection or restrictions. But if you come in with a holistic approach, because sex really is, um, you know, designed for us to procreate. Sex is what people, you know, normally get married for so that they can, um, you know, stay with that one partner and, um, you know, you know, enjoy themselves and, you know, be doing, have a happier existence. So if you can actually, um, you know, sugarcoat your message into, um, you know, educating people on, you know, different activities they could do to enhance their relationships and you just so happen to sell a sex toy, I think you will, um, you know, get more um, and of an open audience than you just going and say, hey, hey, listen, I'm selling, a, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm selling um, a sex toy there. So if you really think about the audience you really want to reach out to, if you go in with wanting to provide them with value, um, you go in with wanting to share information regarding, um, you know, you know, how they can best enjoy, um, you know, their partners, their spouses. And you've also right about now in Australia have an open market with, um, you know, those of the same sex, um, you know, um, you know, uh, orientation. So you, you really want to hone in on who you want to attract as an audience because leading in with, you know, just the sex toy is, is probably going to, um, you know, have you, um, facing a bit of a glitch there. So let me know if that makes sense to you there, Matt. Um, I mean, I don't know how all of that just came through, but obviously it is a product, no matter what sort of product it is. If you lead in with value, showing people that you can actually help them by actually helping them, it's one of those things that people would then, um, you know, get to know, like, and trust who you are. And, um, and I'll also tell you one thing, sex is also a really shameful sort of subject to talk about. So if you would not maybe have it in a social media sort of context, but try and do a search engine optimization approach. Also bearing in mind that you're not leaning towards the keywords that porn stars use. So figure out how you can go around it. And um, yeah, you could, um, you know, you could, um, you could end up, you know, reaching out an audience that is actually engaged right there. The thing is, um, yes, uh, Scott says, more time, more sales, more profit. Thank you so much for tuning in, brother. Hope you're having a fantastic week. And we still need to talk about that website. Website, all right? <laughs> I'm still holding on to, um, you know, the last conversation that we had. Um, and I really, really um, want to see how we can... Um, you know, um, help each other right there. Now, um, I, I hope I answered your question there, Matt, um, regarding your new venture. You should also understand with true love and respect for what you're doing, my man, social media really is one of those things that, um, you know, um, if, 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 if somebody's scrolling through their newsfeed, 
they do not want that all of a sudden um, a sex toy appears. You know what I mean? So you should also bear in mind that social media is happening um, you know, around, you know, maybe somebody sitting at a barbecue with their family. So they wouldn't just want to be having right on their phone a, a, a picture of a sex toy, you know. So you want to be careful um, how you present your opportunity to those people. But if it's all about money and thinking that just because everybody, um, you know, has sexual organs or, you know, is, is pre-designed to wanting to have sex, then, um, you know, maybe you might not be getting the value that you really want from, um, you know, the product that you're selling to your audience right there. So let me know if that answers your question. And uh, um, if anyone else, um, you know, has any questions regarding their product and how they can actually bring it to the market, um... Scott says, I wish I could come on and weigh in on this one. Um, I don't know. Is there a way that you can be invited to this? I'm not sure. Um, but did you see the question, Scott, that uh, Matt asked a little bit earlier on? So um, that's the one that I'm just answering right there. And <laughs> Scott says, I have some answers to it, bro. Uh, okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, I don't know. Is there a way that you can be um, invited to this um, segment. I'm not sure how, how this works. I'm, I'm just going on there. Now, I've got a question from Kim, and then she says, uh, and Kim, if you're going to be watching this show a bit later on, just type in the number one so that I know you pass by. Um, Kim says, what is the best way to determine the market for my business whether um, and whether it's in demand? Um, okay, let's see what Matt says. It's better to ask those um, answer those questions that are coming in live. Now, Matt says, good stuff, mate. We provide loads of content like that, sharing blog posts on all kinds of topics on NCX and enhancing relationships, fun content and po posts, um, sex tips, positions. Right. Absolutely. So if you're already doing that, I think that would be the best way to do it because I'll also tell you, it is an embarrassing topic for people to have on their phones. So you want to make sure that whichever way you're doing it, you're making it easy for your audience to actually get that information. So maybe um, try um, a search engine approach. Um, also, really, maybe, um, yeah, it's yeah. The thing is, you 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 also have to be very, um, you know, um, very very clear with your messaging because whatever you're going to be putting out there is borderline pornography so yes that that's why i think maybe they want to keep it pg so it's one of those things um that really works out now um scott says when promotion ask questions to your uh audience that open up their pain in their sex life absolutely um you know a lot of people wouldn't understand that they do have a problem especially when it comes to that department because maybe some of the things that might be a problem to them is they've lost you know their their their, their will to want to perform with their partner or things like that why am i talking about sex on a marketing show <laughs> ah you know the joys of an ask and pro Scott says, um, instead of showing off the sex toys as questions get their attention. <laughs> I'm just laughing at myself. I'm like, there I am fully, fully, full throttle. You know, it's like, it's like, it's like the, um, what do you call it? It's like an Oprah Winfrey show, you know, or like one of those, um, you know, health shows. No, it's not. This is a marketing show. Matt, stay with the program, my man. <laughs> Yes, ask questions that get their attention. Um, I think, Scott, you refer to, have you ever seen those late night commercials, um, you know, that pop up and they're like, are you having problems getting, mm -mm -mm? and then they're like, dial 9100. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for that question. It just, you know, got, got us all started. Uh, great stuff. Great stuff. I'm really hoping you guys, <laughs> um, you should start watching TV, my man. <laughs> they always have this weird, um, what do you call it? Weird um, uh, commercials. Can't do Facebook ads or retargeting. I can imagine, I can imagine with that sort of a product, um, you can't. But I think you can do a Facebook live 
um, I think you can really put out content out there so we can see how it all works out. Look, Corin, my man, hope you're having a fantastic uh, Friday and you are all ready for the um, long weekend. I mean, it is the Ask and Prosper show today, so let's see what we can come up with and um, yeah, talk about things that will help you start scale and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Um, Scott says, wife, three kids, two businesses, no time for things like TV. Oh, absolutely. I don't watch TV myself unless it's um, Netflix or something that um, you know I'm on or something like that. Ansley, thank you so much for chilling in. Hope you're having a fantastic Friday. It's the Ask and Prosper show today. So if you've got any questions, let me know. And I see Charlie O'Shea has just also tuned in. You guys missed out a whole big set 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 <laughs> section that we were talking about sex. So you missed it out. <laughs> you missed it out. Uh, Scott, you want me to Skype you when I'm done? Okay. Um, I will be done at three. So maybe after that, I'll just get in touch with you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we were talking about sex, baby. It, it was fun. It was fun. It was fun. All right. So the other question that came in was, what is the best way to determine um, the market for my business um, and whether it's in demand or not? This is what a lot of people are facing. Um, you know, um, this is what a lot of people are facing within their business. Um, because everybody has their marketing sort of forte, you know what I mean? Some people just like the networking uh, part. Um, some people like the PR part. Some people like the Facebook marketing part. Some people, everybody has some sort of a weak spot. There's no way you're going to be able to, 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 to grasp all of the functionalities that are needed um, you know, for you to actually um, you know, represent your brand out there. So... Um, Half of the things that a lot of people that that they do, especially when they're starting, um, or if even if they've been running for for years, is they haven't, um, you know, they haven't really, really, really done the research to find out who exactly is, um, you know, who exactly is buying their product. You know what I mean? Because simple research will actually help you to identify who your prospects are going to be who are the people you need to reach out to because the more you don't have prospects the more you don't have people to sell to like right now if you ask yourself do you know three or four people that you can ring to initiate um, a, a sales process with whatever you're selling do you know or do you have three people that you can ring up right now and initiate a sales process or close a deal with them you know but if you are prospecting and you're making prospecting your way of life um, you will start knowing and identifying which people are the people that are actually, um, you know, uh, the best people for your product or your service. Now, Charlie says people without washing machines. Absolutely. How, how do you then know that in this household or within this block of flats, this person doesn't have, um, you know, this person doesn't have a washing machine. So I don't know maybe wh how you prospect with your businesses, but it's one of those things. Uh, Scott says, Prosper, got to run, mate. Talk next week. Okay, let's do that. I'll shoot you through my calendar so that we're all um, aligned. Um, this show really goes for an hour. Um, yeah, but yeah, at three, that's when I, I finish this show. So I'm not sure if we're going to be able to speak at that particular time. So basically, um, I was still talking about the research. Um, there's two types of research. There's the, there's what they call secondary research and, um, there's what they call, um, primary research. So you need to figure out where are you within your business? All right. Because secondary information is stuff that is just generic. All right. It's stuff that you can get from magazines and stuff that you can get from newspapers. Um, you know, that's research you do on the internet um, you know, publications within your industry, etc., etc. Now, Charlie says you can do a whole week's laundry in an hour at our shop. Absolutely. Um, a few people can, can, would want to know that, but how do you know which people are the best people, um, to reach out to that actually need your service? I mean, the, the, the lucky thing that you have, Charlie, with your 
type of work is you have a premises that people can walk past and it's already advertising itself. But some people don't have that. Some people are purely online. So it's very difficult for them to figure out who exactly can purchase their, um, you know, products and who exactly can purchase, you know, their um, services. And word of mouth it's an easy way, obviously, through your shop because if somebody, let's say it's a weekend like this, they can maybe um, be on the phone talking to a friend and then they can say, hey, where are you? Oh, I'm at the laundromat where I am, um, you know, washing my clothes. And they're like, which one? You know, all of those things. Any place that people can report to is an easier sort of marketing um, than somebody else who has to actually be seen online, etc., etc. So, um, you know, some people do their research by watching what their competition is doing, um, scanning their ads or looking at their ads. And just really looking at maybe in your industry, there are reports to say, um, you know, um, you know, how many people, you know, need that sort of service that you are providing. So, you know, you can find all those demographics, your target audience from, you know, secondary research that you can do online. You can also find databases of people that have maybe raised their hand up, um, you know, earlier on in their life to say that they might be in need of your services. So... Um, you know, it's, it's, that's the secondary part that you can utilize, um, you know, in answer to that question, Kim. Um, and, uh, Charlie says, hope to see you at our first. Right. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not that way inclined. I don't know what makes you think that would be a place that I would want to frequent. But anyway, thank you so much for that invitation. Um, obviously, then there's also what's called primary research. Um, you know, primary research refers to the, the intimate research that you would do, um, you know, with your focus audience, people that have already purchased from you. So it could be telephone surveys, it could be polls that you might conduct, you know, with, um, with your audience, etc., etc. all of those things that, um, you know, bring you closer to the audience and you get to ask them and actually, um, you know, um, you know, be there for them when they're answering questions. I see, uh, Bersha has just tuned in. Thank you so much, brother. And hope you've been doing fantastic in your space right there. Um, how's the, how's, how's the week been? Hope it's been fantastic. Now, um, a lot of people, a lot of people don't know how to conduct surveys and actually ask the right kind of questions so that people, um, you know, their target audience would realize and also confirm that they are the people that they should be, um, you know, doing business for. So um, magazines are a good way to find your leads uh, because bigger companies are already advertising. All right. So you would also obviously know the people that are purchasing those all people that are buying books off of Mac, M Amazon will be the ones that will be, um, you know, able to, um, you know, be um, your future customers. Bersha, thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, hope you have a fantastic weekend there, my man. All right. So another question that I had from Stacy from Shine Coaching. And if you're going to be watching this video later on, Stacy, just leave us the number one so that we know that you've passed by. And Stacy says, how do I determine if there is a need for my business in my local area? Okay, this is a good one. And I have been conducting my own market research by asking local people about my idea. And um, I've, gone, I've gotten a huge positive response. I think there's a large market for my idea, but I'm not sure how to begin the process. All right. So... Obviously, this is about a local area. A local area, what I would just suggest basically is maybe look at, you know, flyers, look at um, SEO, really um, look at maps. When people are typing, um, you know, uh, coaching near me or anything else near me, um, people are always inclined to search for, you know, the local listings that are around them. Uh, Siri also gives, um, you know, value these days, especially when people just, um, you know, talk to Siri and say, hey, Siri, where's the nearest dentist? Where's the nearest, um, you know, business of sorts near my area? You know what I mean? So, you know, if you're going through that sort of part, you need 
to make sure that, you know, the people within your local vicinity actually know about your business and you're also connected to other business people that are already operating within, um, you know, your, your business. So, Kim, you know, you know, you might have, you know, your hunch about, um, you know, the need for your idea uh, to exist in the world, especially in a local sort of setup. But however, your research just shouldn't end in your local vicinity there. There's other people that have probably done what you're trying to do. Figure out who are they, what are they already doing in other areas, and how have they actually, um, you know, managed to bring about, you know, the... the, the the type of business that you're trying to bring out there. So if that's a question about the local area, it should be one of those things that you should look out for. There's already somebody who's done or is doing whatever it is that you're trying to do, okay? Because the more data you uncover, um, it's going to support your expectations about business, the, um, the success of it, and also maybe some businesses are seasonal, you know? Some people like doing certain things in winter and in summer, maybe like personal training or things like that. So when you've got all that data, it's easy for you to uncover any portholes um, that might blinker or that might distract your thinking, you know what I mean? So... Obviously, you want to really cover your bases uh, more thoroughly by, by um, examining a variety of information sources. So if you're watching this part right now, um, it's the Ask and Prosper show. You can ask me any questions regarding your business and how you too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I've been answering questions of the people um, that have left them and, and gone. They're going to be watching um, you know, this part a little bit uh, later on. So um, type in uh, whatever questions you might have um, you know, pertaining to how to market your brand, how to um, you know create a personal brand, how to you know present yourself on social media, all of those things that might um, you know help you um, you know be in front of your audience so that you can actually make more money with less struggle. Okay, so we're still talking about how um, you know Kim's question about determ determining um, the need for the presence of her business um, you know within her local area. Find out. Um, you know, what other service providers are providing similar services, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, if, um, if, if, if you're a personal trainer and um, you find there's a few gyms within the place, there's few sports, um, um, you know, other sports facilities within the place, most of the people that frequent those areas can also be your target audience. So try and, um, you know, participate in that so that people get to know, like, and trust you. And as you know, people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. You know what I mean? And sometimes they are usually um, industry or trade associations that are associated with certain um, industries. Like there's the dentist association, there's the dermatology association, there's the... Uh, um, you know, surgery, surgeons association, inquire about those, um, you know, uh, sort of organizations because they've already done the research for you. So those research reports and survey data that they already have, it's all available to people that are members within that, um, you know, trade association. So that was a really good question. And thank you so much for bringing it about. Um, Kim on how you can uh, determine if there's a need for your business, um, you know, within your local area. Now your question still goes on and says, I've been coaching in my own mark. I've been conducting my own market research by asking local people about my idea and I've gotten a huge and positive response. All right. So make sure these people that you're asking are not your mother, your father, your dad, your uncle, your grandfather, because they might just be saying, yes, there's a need just because they don't want to hurt your feelings. All right. So you really want to go to people that are actually actively looking for this service or people that have served people that are looking for this service. This is the only response that you actually need that you can take to the bank. All right. I see Timmy has just tuned in. Thank you so much, my brother, for tuning in. Um, this is the Ask and Prosper show. People are just asking questions and then they're leaving or they're just asking questions and staying and getting the answer. So if you do have any questions, um, let me know. You did ask me a question earlier on, Timmy, about um, find my DJ earlier on. Um, the thing that I said in response was um, get people to know about the service. It doesn't matter how you do it, whether it's in social media, maybe it's a Facebook Live like this or, you know, get... Um, you know, people that have already um, been using DJs, find out, you know, because 
Because everybody's going to have a party. 365, there's always somebody's birthday. So you can find out from uh, people that already are frequenting clubs. You can also partner with people um, or with DJs that already have their own lists at the um, you know at doors and then you can quickly send either emails or um, you know friend requests to people um, you know that might be in those uh, circles already because you do know that they are in search for a party uh, once in a while so figure out that could also help you out and yeah just hit the pavement let everybody know that you exist let everybody know that your product exists um, because nobody's going to care about it being out there except yourself. All right. So that could also work. And um, eventually, at the end of the day, um, there's so much that you can do, um, especially when it comes to, to, to marketing an app. Find out who already is in the industry and model what they've done. So if your product is already being used in the industry, I think there's already um, services like uh, uh, rent, um, rent a, um, what do they call it? Rent a list or something like that where clubs can go in and, and swap lists. You can also be part and parcel of that. I know, um, you know, Spice Market has one of those because... Um, they sent my details to another, um, you know, uh, place, but they'd asked me to do so. So find out who already has the list of people that you might, uh, want to, um, you know, uh, reach out to. Now, one other question that I got, um, earlier on, I mean, obviously I've answered your question. I just want to answer the other one. This is Peter from dash, dash, dash real estate. I'm not going to mention what real estate this is. He says as a one person enterprise, what would you say is the best way to attract clients? This is a very good question, you know? First of all, you got to have goals. You got to know who exactly your audience is going to be because you can't be everything to everyone. And if you spray and pray with your marketing, it's going to be hard for people to actually know that you're speaking to them or you they need your services, all right? So the best key here, uh, Peter, is to, and also if you're going to be watching this later on, just leave the number one so that I know that you've passed by. The, the, the key, um, you know, is to set up a, a, a marketing program or marketing plan that you manage along, you know, doing daily activities that will actually grow your business. Because if you try and do everything at the same time, you do your Facebook, you do your Instagram, you do your website, you do whatever, you know, all the PR stuff that you're supposed to be doing, it will be so difficult for you to keep on top of things. But if you've got a marketing plan or if you've got some sort of blueprint that you follow, first of all, you maybe figure out the people that you really want to reach out to and then how are you going to engage them? How are you going to educate them? How are you going to inspire them, providing them with value and positioning them? And then pretty much after that, how are you going to convert all of those people, um, you know, with your online marketing and what calls to action are you going to be giving them so that they can purchase from you? And then pretty much from then on, connect with the people that you've um, you know, brought together because if you're not prospecting, that means your business is dead. All right. So you, the key is to have, um, you know, consistency in all the work that you're doing. Everything that you're doing matters. Every single piece of marketing that you put out there actually matters. All right. So the key is to set up some sort of a strategy or to set up a marketing program that you can manage along the way so that you input daily activities and actions that will help you grow your business, all right? So you should expect to spend, um, let's say 40% of the week, um, you know, of your time during the week on marketing and sales alone, because all of the other stuff that you're doing is not income generating, um, you know, uh, activities. You wanna be doing and dwelling on the things that are bringing the income into your business, all right? so. More or less, like I said, up to about 40% of the time that you're working should be on marketing and sales and, 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 and more, more of, you know, you know, you know, just maybe whatever Photoshop stuff that you might be doing in your business because all businesses have three kinds of prospects at any given time. <clears throat> you've got cold leads, you've got warm leads and you've got hot leads. All right. So if you've got cold leads, you need to bring them across so that they become <clears throat> um, 
warm. And if you've got warm leads, you need to make them hot enough to want to purchase from you. So all of these things that you've got to do, um, remember, they say that people have to see your content at least six to eight times so that um, you know they can make a purchasing decision. So once people have seen your stuff, you know they're moving in your funnel or whichever way you're bringing them closer to your um, cash register. So like I said, all this this um, cold, warm, hot, they take multiple touch points and most pro prospects they don't move in a linear direction um you know through the cell cycle so you really want to make sure you you are giving people the right kind of content that engages them that educates them that inspires them and provides them with value while you're positioning yourself as the person that can provide that service all right so to create an effective sort of um you know marketing program um, you need to plan the activities that you need to do with each separate um, you know, type of prospect on an ongoing basis because you have to be consistent. One thing that you really have to know is out of sight, out of mind. So if your cold prospects um, haven't heard about you, even though they might be qualified, but they don't know anything about your company, your brand or your results. All right. So you want to warm them up. And, and, and you want to bring them across with well-targeted either emails or well-targeted um, Facebook posts or well-targeted um, you know, social media um, activities or advertising or maybe you're retargeting them, whichever way you're doing it. Or you have campaigns that are going out, uh, public relations um, or whatever form of media that you're going to be using to bring them closer to your um, your content, all right? So whatever it is, um, you also have to have a place that you're bringing these people to. Either you're bringing them back to your website, back to see some sort of content, so you need to figure out how are you going to be warming up these cold leads, all right? How are you gonna be providing them with so much value because we are paid in direct proportion to the value we bring into the marketplace. All right. So now once these um, customers are warm or these prospects are warm, um, you know, they, they're almost close to um, they're close to actually, um, you know, maybe uh, making that sale or they're close to you, um, you know, um, you know, getting or providing them value or whatever product or service that you give them. You constantly have to be inspiring them. You constantly have to be inspirational. This is the part where you warm people up because it's sad out there. You know what I mean? A lot of people are going through hard times. So you need to motivate them and you now need to make the marketing more personalized and you need to make sure that the marketing tools um, are, are acknowledging that this is not just a hashtag. It is a person with blood, feelings and also family or whatever it is. So whatever presentation you're going to be doing, whether it's webinars and, and continuously advertising to them, you need to show them that they can now start trusting you. They can now start knowing you and this you can do um, you know, with web webinars, you can do this with even Facebook Live like this, or you can create a group on social media, um, on, on Facebook that you can, um, you know, continuously speak to them once they're warm enough to understand what it is that you have to offer. All right. So, I mean, if you're enjoying this part right now, just type in the number one. It will just get us to know um, the type of people that are on and how, um, you know, we're helping, um, you know, you know, with this video and stuff like that. And also... There's also <clears throat> things like, um, yeah, the hot parts, the, the, the hot prospects. Now, these are the people that you've moved all the way from cold to warm and you've done all the work. You know what I mean? They, they've gone through your sales cycle and, and they're now ready. They're the people that we say they've got a bleeding neck. They have seen your work. They know who you are. They trust you. Now they're ready to, to hand over their credit card. So, you know, and some of them, they, they may start by referring you to, to, to other people so that they can see from a distance how you operate. So you want to make sure that you, you're opening your eyes to all of these, um, you know, things. So for, if you're a service provider, um, you know, personal selling is usually necessary just to, to, to add that final, um, you know, heat to the, to, 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 to the sale. Because half of the times we think that we can automate some things, but you can't, um, you can't automate authenticity. You can't automate uh, feelings. You can't automate this. You know what I mean? So some people really want to know that they're going to be working and dealing with somebody who they can rely on or they can 
can pick up the phone and talk to and not just some sort of uh, robot that's just going to ignore them the moment that they have a problem. So you want to make sure that your customers are rest assured that you're the right kind of person with the right kind of attitude and the same values that they can, you know, actually, um, you know, trust to do business with. All right. So that's one of the things that you can have a look at. Make sure when, whenever you're prospecting, you figure it out your warm leads, your cold leads, um, you know, and, and the hot leads and separate them because not everyone is going to be ready to buy just because they've seen your videos. Not everyone is going to be ready to buy or ready to engage with your content just because they've probably seen a couple of things that you've done prior. You know what I mean? So don't forget to keep the questions coming. I see Timmy's on, uh, Jenny's on. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. And if there's anything that I can help you personally with your brand, um, I'm more than happy, um, you know, to have a quick see and see, um, you know, how we can be of mutual, um, you know, benefit and see how exactly your business can actually start becoming profitable and enjoyable using the strategies that, um, you know, we've been helping other people with. All right. So here's another question. Um, so, I mean, if, 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 if that one is clear, can you just type in the number three? It just helps me to understand that the people that are watching right now are actually, um, you know, satisfied with the answer that I gave them. Now, the other question that I had <clears throat> is, um, how do I market my business to prospective customers and <clears throat> on a daily basis with a shoestring budget? All right. So this is, this is pra practically everyone. Um, I'm just going to get a single on my drink. This is practically everyone. You know, cash flow is a problem with many businesses, and that's the reason why a lot of businesses don't go past the four year mark because cash flow really is, um, you know, crippling their business and how they can actually um, start scale and grow. All right. So, um, Amanda, Amanda W, type in the number one if you pass by. I've answered your question. Um, you want to know how to market your business on a shoestring budget. All right. So first of all, one of the things that you shouldn't really skimp on within your business is marketing, because the moment you have some sort of money, please try and put it in marketing because it's the only thing that gives you a return on investment. You know, some of the other things that you might think are needed, or maybe you might need to buy new clothes, new equipment. All of those things do not generate the money as fast as what marketing does, you know, so. Once you've got that sort of set up in mind, it will be very easy for you to start scale and grow a business that's uh, profitable and enjoyable. And those that are watching in from YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. Obviously, this is the Ask and Prosper show where we get to answer the questions that you might have, um, you know, pertaining to your business so that it's profitable and enjoyable. And I see on Facebook, Melissa, Melissa has just tuned in. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you're having a fantastic week so far. Um, I know you're a guru in your space, but if you might have any questions pertaining to how I do my business or how you can also have a business that's profitable and enjoyable, more than happy to answer that question. Right now, I was about to answer <clears throat> Amanda W's question that says, how do I market my business to prospective customers on a daily basis with a shoestring budget? All right. So when you're right on target with your marketing you you know you know you know you really have to be marketing daily all right you have to be putting stuff out there daily for people to actually know that you exist and research shows that um customers need to hear a message at least six to eight times for them to have some sort of recognition or any recall of a brand all right so nine times before they actually become a customer and all of those times if you miss that cycle you're starting all over again so if you're just a one click wonder and you're just spraying and praying with your marketing or one time or sporadic tactics these are ine ineffective these days our audiences right now have a three second um attention span so you know no one is going to be um aware of what you do nobody's going to accept um you know you selling to them nobody's gonna prefer you over other providers and you there's not gonna be any demand for your product all right so you want to make sure that you create more marketing momentum every single day that you can make it part of your well-being make it part of who you are wherever you are make it 
part of your daily action to be putting word out there for people to understand and know that your service is in existence and they can get value from what you've got to offer. All right. So, you know, you can do this really easily. Like what I'm doing right now um, on, on Facebook and on YouTube and on Instagram, um, where people can watch this video live on Facebook. I will take this off. I will put this on, on, on YouTube so that it can also be... Um, it can also be um, a piece of content. It will be uh, transcribed into a blog. And then pretty much from then on, I would have created so many content pieces. So if people haven't watched the live version of this video, they're still going to watch it in post-production. They're still going to catch up on what I have said and still be helping them. Even if I'm out, um, you know, out with my family, video is really, really important. All right. So, you know, you know, you know the, the basic strategy that you can say have an idea of how many clients you want, you know, especially. And then just contact the ones that you think are in need of your product there and then. Because prospects are always out there in search of, um, you know, in, in search of services, you know. So if you say your, 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 if your strategy is to contact 10 new clients a day, um, prospects or contact contacts each time. I mean, or contacts each 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 day. You now have maybe five days a week. So that means you now have fifty people that are eligible to pick. Um, you know your products at any given time if you keep pursuing it. You know, and um, half half of the things that you can do is just really be on the ground with your audience. Find out exactly how you can help them by actually help them help, helping them. You know, and if you have already got a customer base, find out from those people, um, you know, how you can get referrals from them, from from the people that are already in existence. I see Brian Machaira has just tuned in on Facebook. Uh, Sally on YouTube. How are you guys doing? Hope you're having a fantastic Friday. You know, this show has been uh, streamed on YouTube and Facebook. So I'm looking at different screens just to make sure everything is working. And if you've got any questions regarding your, um, you know, your, your business, how you can uh, market scale and grow it, you can ask me a couple of questions. I'll let you know how, um, you know, maybe I'll give you an answer to that. So ask your current customers if they can give you referrals because they already trust you. They already know how you operate. It's an easier transaction. It's an easier transition, um, you know, for them to just refer somebody just because um, they already know what you're about. And also, that is also a way to get feedback. If your audience is willing and able to refer you to, a, to, 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 the, to their most trusted people, then that means you must be doing something good. Do you know what I mean? All right. And one thing that I don't see a lot of my friends or my close, um, you know, business associates doing is showing up in the media. I don't see a lot of us showing up in the media. There's a lot of free publicity that has the potential of boosting your business. All right, you know, there's um, websites like SourceBottle.com or just reaching out to um, you know people that are bloggers within your area, and you can also contact your local newspaper. And, and offer them to lend expert quotes about maybe activities that are happening within your area. So figure out how you can actually be in the mainstream sort of media. Because if you just keep your audience to Facebook, half of the time Facebook audiences don't purchase jack. Like we've noticed, we've been doing this for years. A lot of people on Facebook don't actually end up becoming customers. They're good. They're happy to watch. They're happy to see. Um, they're happy to just, you know, like, comment and share, but they don't buy anything. All right. So you want to make sure that you go into mainstream media with whatever testimonials you've gotten from the freeloaders off of Facebook. All right. And you can go in with your, um, you know, free publicity requests. They're always looking for stories if you've got a good angle, all right? And if you've got a, um, a, a physical store, you want to invite people to your store. Don't just wait for people to come. Be clever and piggyback on events that can steer customers to your business, all right? So there's probably, um, you know, events like there's, a, there's probably, um, what do you call it? There's probably a, um, 
a, 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 a festival happening around your area. Some people actually close their shop so that they can they can enjoy the festival instead of bringing people to your to your shop like that. You know, so there are several celebrations each month that um, you know you can promote as part of what you do within your business. Figure out how you can maximize on getting as much publicity as you can because most of the publicity that you can get is really really free half of the publicity that you pay for really goes nowhere you know really ends you up with nowhere i've i've been featured in newspapers and 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 like um you know some tv shows and i really do try and put and branch out as much as i can because you know half of the people that are on facebook normally are not going to end up as your customers you know, half of the people are not going to end up as your customers. Right. Let's go to another question. Um, that is from Amanda. And Amanda, if you are still there, just type in the number one or so just to see if you we have answered your question well. Now, there's a question that just came in. Uh, do some kind of advertising work better than others? This is from Kathy. From uh, just Kathy. Do some kind of advertising work better than others? Okay. Um, this is a tricky question. It depends what your product is. It depends um, where your audience really is. It depends what sort of person you are yourself. Because some people might say, oh, you should use Facebook Live. But what if you, you're not eloquent enough? What if you are a shy person? What if you cannot you know, string a sentence together in order for you to actually uh, you know, hold an audience or things like that? You know what I mean? So all types of advertising work. If they are properly used by the right kind of person with the right kind of product with the right kind of audience to re to be receptive to that sort of uh, message, you know what I mean. So the one thing you should really, really, um, you know, get acquainted to, especially in the online space, is you only have to know three M's when it comes to marketing. That's your message, market, and the media you're going to be using to reach out to that audience. So what is your message? All right. What is it that you sell? Who do you sell it to and why should they care? All right. And then who you sell it to should know why they should care to buy from you. That's the message. The media can always change. It could be a billboard. It could be a book. It could be, um, you know, um, you know, you know, this, this is marketing. This is branding. Um, it could be, um, Facebook ads. It could be anything that you could think of. You know, the fact that, um, you know, um, Various forms of media they utilize each other, um, you know, you know, to 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 gain on, you know, you. What can I say? It, it illustrates that um, even even newspapers are advertising on Facebook. Um, Facebook is advertising on TV. So the fact that various forms of media they utilize each other, it illustrates that not one kind of advertising is superior. TV uh, shows are advertising on radio. Radio shows are advertising on TV, you know, and bloggers are advertising on Instagram, Snapchat. Snapchat is advertising on Facebook. So there's no way you can pinpoint one, um, you know, type of advertising or one type of media to say that's the one that works better than the others. You know, like I'm saying radio stations, they promote themselves on, on, on TVs. Or, or on bus, um, on, 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 on the side of a bus or on a billboard, you know, but they have an opportunity to advertise to the millions of people that are listening to them every day, but they still use other modalities to advertise. So there's no one advertising piece that is superior to any, you know, it depends where is your audience, what do they need from you and how do they, you know, consume that uh, content. So if you've enjoyed this part about uh, which advertising works better, please type in the number one. It just, you know, helps us to understand that, um, you know, this content is being useful um, to those that are watching and listening right now. You know, I think you probably uh, noticed this, this. There's a large number of ads that are coming through Facebook right now. It could be Netflix, whatever it is from traditional media that are using, um, you know, the online space to, to, to advertise in the online space is using traditional media, um, you know, to, to, to advertise. So if you use advertising correctly, it will help you, you know, but you have to know specifically what demographics are you targeting? You must be able to define your customer base according to their age, according to their gender, what groups or what sort of 
person they have become. And I see Luke Moroni has just tuned in. Thank you so much for tuning in, brother. I really, really enjoyed your show this morning. Um, you know, it, it was eye-opening. That's the thing that I was asking you the other day, um, especially when it came to, um, you know, entrepreneurs and getting loans. So, yes, um, I'm, I'm open to us having another discussion so that we can figure this all out. So, I was answering a question that came through yesterday that says, what uh, do some kind of advertising work better than others? And I was just saying, you know, it depends really on who your audience is, um, where they are found and what sort of modality do they want to consume your content through. So, you know, you should know as, as, a, as an entrepreneur or as a business person, the gender of the people you're trying to reach out to, uh, their edge range, maybe what is their worldview? How do they perceive themselves? Because I always talk about this story about uh, this dentist up the road from me. He's got a sign outside that says, um, you know, new patients welcome. So he has already failed to uh, establish who he wants uh, to come into his uh, surgery there. So you really, really want to make sure that every single time, um, you know, you actually can speak the same language that your audience is speaking and you see the world in the same way that they actually see it. Now, Luke says, thanks. Yes, entrepreneurs making use of vendor finance uh, with home purchases. Absolutely. I want to hear more about that. All right. So at the end of the day, this has been fun doing this, even though there was not that many questions. Um, a lot of people came in and out. Uh, some people are watching on YouTube. That is understandable. Some people are watching on Facebook. Thank you so much. Um, I really want you to know that I want you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. No matter what it is that you're selling, as long as you're providing value um, you know, to your audience, as long as people really, really want what you're selling, as long as you've got what it takes, as long as you are the right kind of person to be providing that service, I really want to help you out. So if you've got any questions regarding this show today, be sure to put them in the comments below and let me know how... Um, you know, what it is that we can basically do, um, you know, in order for us to be, do and have uh, businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. And don't forget, whatever you're going to be doing, um, all you can do is all you can do. You know what I mean? You can do a lot of PR on a shoestrings budget. It just depends. Do you really, 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 really want to do this? Um, you know, as a sole proprietor, and, and if you're just starting out, you know, um, you need to figure out you don't have that much money to be doing extravagant things. So there's certain things you can do on a, on a, on a shoestring budget. Um, half of them is speaking, like what I'm just doing here. Um, you know, sh create a show on Facebook. Create a show on Zoom that you can actually help other people by actually helping them. Speak for free to audiences that are part, part of your target market. People need to know and understand that you can actually help them. You can actually do these things, um, you know, in order for them uh, to, 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 to know, like, and trust who you are. All right. So at the end of the day, I really um, applaud everybody else that... Um, tuned in to this show today i know it's been a very very long show um but obviously as a friday it is one of those things that we uh do it's the ask and prosper show where you get to ask me questions and i get to answer them in um you know the best way that i can but at the end of the day i really want you to know that if i can be of any help to you if i can um you know literally um be of service and if i can help you by actually helping you it is something that i'm more than happy uh, to have a quick look at um it's almost three o'clock i've got a call waiting for me and um it is spartan how's it going my man let me just wind up um the, the the live that i was doing here thank you so much for tuning in guys it's been fantastic and phenomenal um those people that have got questions that i haven't answered please type them in um in the, in the bottom there so that we can actually understand um you know where you are within your business how we can actually help you by actually helping you. It's going to be a long weekend here in um, in uh, Melbourne. So I'm wishing you a fantastic uh, weekend for those that are going to be traveling or doing stuff. But don't forget to be marketing um, your business wherever you're going. Don't forget to be reaching out to audiences because the more you stop prospecting, um, you know, the, 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 the quicker your business dies because at the end of the day, we do 
survive on selling. We do survive on actually providing value to our, um, you know, targeted audience or to our esteemed, um, you know, customers. So um, if this video has been helpful to you, uh, let a brother know. I will be obviously hanging around here, um, you know, so that I can actually help you, um, you know, start, scale and grow a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day and thank you, thank you so much. Um, you know, for being uh, loyal and for uh, tuning in. I know it's been a long show, but one of those things. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys. Bye for now.